Welcome to r slash ask reddit where we answer the question, what's a funny memory you have that if you told someone, they think that you're lying? Our first reply is from user. A friend once called the wrong number, got the wrong house, and had the right person pick up. So I was at work replacing a modem for my boss. I'd removed the modem and connected a telephone to test that it had a dial tone. Soon after, the phone rang. That didn't make much sense, because that phone line had only been used for outgoing calls from the computer. When I picked up, the person on the other line just said, Hey man, you want to see a movie later? I recognized the voice too. It was a friend of mine. I was really confused for a second and said something like, Josh, how did you get this number? He said that he called my home phone number. He must have misdialed my number and accidentally dialed the number for my boss's modem line at work. He got the wrong number, got the wrong house, and the right person picked up on a phone that had only been connected for two minutes in the past two years. The odds must be astronomical. It's just a weird coincidence that I'll always remember. And beneath that, we have this story from Non-Error. I once cold called a friend that I hadn't heard from in 10 years, but the line was busy. I called again a few seconds later, and his first words were, I just called you, but it was busy. We hadn't spoken in years, and yet we cold called each other within the same 10 seconds. It wasn't for any particular reason either, just pure coincidence. Our next reply is from Sparkplug. When I was ditching first period in high school, a cop was in front of me at the 7-Eleven. The cashier couldn't break the cop's 50 bucks, so I paid for his coffee with my stuff. He thanked me. We jabbed about me being late to school, and I noticed a tattoo on his neck, and we joked about bad decisions. Two weeks later, I get caught in a speed trap, and guess who sticks his head in my window? He went, coffee girl, and I went, tattoo neck, and I got let off with a finger shake. <laughs> and then beneath that, Zane Barr says, For some reason, when I read finger shake, I imagined him holding out his finger and you shaking it like a handshake. And beneath that, Sparkplug says, Super funny side story. A few years ago, I was meeting my boyfriend's brother. He put his hand out and said, Give me three. And me, in all my uncool, uncoordinated white people lameness, put out three fingers and dragged them across his palm. He looked at my boyfriend, my boyfriend looked at me, and we all burst out laughing. Apparently, that story went through the whole family, and that's how I met all of them. Even years later, we're all still friends, and that's how my brother still greets me. Our next reply is from Outrobby. I tripped and fell at the same corner outside Subway three different times, years apart, and the same guy tried to catch me every single time. And OP clarifies in an edit. Okay, I keep getting loads of soulmate and marriage comments, so to clarify, I was seven years old the first time this happened, and this was a grown man, LMAO. And no, he's not a stalker or a pedo. He didn't work at the subway, and he wasn't homeless. It was just a crazy coincidence. And beneath that, Cedar Cosmonaut says, You just reminded me of this. My brother worked at Burger King in high school, and he would ride his bike to and from work when the weather permitted it. He got hit by a car once, but he was fine, and the witness to it thought to call his work and tell his boss what happened and that he was going to the hospital. A year later, the same thing happened again, and again, a witness called his boss and said he was hit by a car and he was going to the hospital. The guy came back to my brother, explained that he had called his boss, and his boss said, What, again? Naturally, the woman who hit him saw this as a reason to claim that she wasn't at fault. Man, you know what, actually, this just reminds me, I have my own weird, funny coincidence story. So I went to grad school in Carnegie Mellon, which is in Pittsburgh, and I got my degree in literary and cultural studies. Completely worthless degree, considering I'm now a YouTuber, but that's besides the point. Anyways, at one point, I was applying for a job in Connecticut. And as I was sitting there waiting to get called in, me and this other girl were like in the lobby and we were just chilling, kind of chatting and we're going back and forth talking. And then like, <laughs> and then like randomly out of nowhere, she's just like, this is going to sound funny, but did you go to Carnegie Mellon? And I'm like, yeah, I did go to Carnegie Mellon. Did you? And she said, no, but my roommate did. Do you know such and such? I'm like, yeah, I, I did know such and such. I had a class with her. And then she said, this girl would always tell stories about you, about this kind of goofball in class. 
And the way you're talking to me now, it reminded me of that guy. So I thought that you could be that guy and you are that guy. So that was weird. Isn't it strange to think that like some other person who like, ne like now I can't even remember who that person is. I can't recall her face. I can't recall that person's name at all. But apparently I had enough of an effect on her that she told stories about me to her roommate, even though I have no idea what those stories would have been. And like, I don't know, it's just, it's just really weird. Our next reply is from old buddy, old friend, pal. An eagle came on my face as a ch Oh, an eagle came for my face as a child. Okay, that makes it much more, um, much more palatable here. Okay, an eagle came for my face as a child. <laughs> I was about eight years old. I ducked and it ended up grabbing my hair and taking some with it. I ran inside crying and told my mom. She didn't believe me, so I never told anyone else. I'm currently 22. And beneath that, we have this story from American Mary. The seagull at the park stole my fries. It was 16 years ago, but I'm still mad. A year later, I was at the park eating fries and a seagull swooped down, but I saw it coming. I had a flashback and I punched it harder and faster than a person punching the Jeopardy button when they know the answer and were trying to beat everyone else to the buzzer in that second. <laughs> my date said, what the actual f***? We're married now. <laughs> OP, the perfect reply would have been to just shrug and said, I just really hate birds. <laughs> oh man, stupid seagull. That seagull thought he was going to get some fries, but instead he got show Ryukin into the stratosphere. <laughs> Our next reply is from Forgotten Man Online. I used to go to university with this guy named Sam. Sam was a pretty quirky guy. We had classes together twice a week and were pretty new friends. Anyways, I was walking down the strip of shops between the dorms and campus and I see Sam across the road. I walk up to him, say hi, and be friendly. After a short conversation, I excuse myself and say, bye Sam. He says, I'm not Sam. BS, this is Sam. He talks the same way, he held the conversation fine, and I noticed nothing different about him. He claims to be Sam's identical twin brother. I call out Sam on his BS. Pretending to be his own twin is the kind of stunt that I'd expect out of Sam after knowing him for three months. But no, he insists that he's not Sam. So I say, prove it, Sam. I make this complete stranger who has no idea who I am pull out photo identification like I'm the campus police or something. So was it Sam? Nope. Identical twin brother that Sam just never mentioned. What the F? How have I known this guy for three months and not known that he has a twin brother? I bet this butthole has set me up. I go and confront Sam about it before our lecture later that day. I tell him the story and Sam says BS. He doesn't believe my story. He doesn't believe that I would interrogate his brother and he thinks that I'm making this up. I swear, I say, it's all true. Prove it, he says. So he calls his brother and this mother effer says he has no idea what Sam is talking about. Sam's brother continues to claim that he doesn't recognize me for like seven more months until their birthday party. The only time that I'd ever managed to get them in the same place. And then Sam's twin makes me show my ID when I rock up to the party. Funny effing bastards, identical in every way. Beneath that, we have this story from Disowned by Mother. I worked with someone for years. We were work friendly. We never hung out or talked after work, but I knew him well enough that we knew who each other was. One day, I'm chatting with him in the line at lunch, and I ask him about something that we'd both worked on the day before, and he looks at me like I'm insane. We go back and forth, and I thought that maybe I had mixed things up. I joke it away that I need a vacation. Later that day, he comes and asks me about the exact same case. Turns out, Brandon had an identical twin who worked for our company in a different department. They both worked on the same system doing the same work, but for different teams on different floors. Brandon's brother's name was Brian, so when I would say, What up, B? Both would answer. They both always wore jeans and a generic polo shirt every day, so I never noticed. Our next reply is from Sean Zorio. I had a pet hummingbird as a kid. My mom found it injured on a sidewalk and nursed it back to health. It only had one eye and no depth perception, so we kept it inside. We'd let it buzz around the room, land on us, and all that jazz. My brother told his teacher about it in third grade, and the teacher actually called my mom and was like, Your son has made up a crazy story and insists that it's real. 
The reality was, we did have a pet hummingbird, and that seemed crazy enough that people just didn't believe it. Beneath that, we had this story from deterministic links. We had a kingfisher, a European kingfisher at our pond. Now, what's important to know is that kingfishers are quite rare in and of themselves, and only pass through our country during migration, I think. I don't know how it happened, but it came up in my cousin's third grade science class that a kingfisher visits her every summer. Her teacher scolded her heavily for her lies. Heavily enough for my cousin to be pissed. She took a time-stamped photo of the bird, went to get it developed, and slammed it on the teacher's desk. Apparently, my cousin got her well-earned apology. Our next reply is from BD Bakbuk. I was walking on a hiking slash biking trail when a woman rode past me on her bicycle. I yelled out, keep the pedal to the metal. Not two seconds later, I hear an awful metallic noise and I turned to see the poor woman's pedal mechanism had fallen apart. She told me, you shouldn't have said that. I apologized profusely and asked if she needed any help. Naturally, she didn't. Not from me anyway. Our next reply is from G.H. Perry. I once checked in at a restaurant and gave the hostess my name to hold my slot. She then asked for my last name since the person below me on the list shared my first name. When I told her my last name, she looked at me like I was lying. The person below me had my first name and last name. She laughed and introduced us. We took a picture. I've never met someone with my same first and last name. Beneath that, we have this story from Oatmaster. My sister entered a raffle to get a bike when she was younger, and there was someone with the exact same name there, although her last name was spelled differently. My sister's name was called, but the other girl got there first to take the bike. My mom found out that the name that was actually drawn was my sister's name, but since the other girl had already gotten there first, she dropped it. Needless to say, my sister was not happy. Our next Reddit post is from 42420. I was playing 8-ball at a bar one night. I'm not very good, I just play for fun. I'm on a slight winning streak. My next opponent racks them and I break. The 8-ball goes in on the break, so it's an automatic win. The dude refuses to leave the table and he continues to put quarters in and racks again. I'm like, dude, you lost. There's like 8 other people in line to play next. He's drunk, being stubborn, and won't leave. So, once again, I break, and the eight ball drops in again. <laughs> the dude just walks away without saying a word. Our next Reddit post is from Avery Lowe. Back in middle school, I was walking back to class after lunch when someone chucked something down the hallway as hard as they could. My natural instinct was to jump up and catch it. It was a perfect catch, and not a single person saw. It was a mozzarella stick. Our next reply is from Vanilla Bean. For context on this next post, OP's name is Tiffany and she dated this guy named Steve, but they ended on bad terms. I tell everyone this story. I don't know if someone would think that I'm lying about it though, but it's just too funny for it to be real, in my opinion. My roommate walked in and said, did you hear about Steve? I said, unless he's dead, I don't want to hear about it. There was a moment of silence, followed by, Tiffany. Sure enough, He's dead! Beneath that, we have this story from Granny Bubbles. When I started high school, my family had just moved to a new state, and I was a weird kid with a weird family who didn't know anyone. And then, just before Halloween, my mom died by suicide. Being a weird kid, I decided that the thing to do was to wear all black when I went back to school a couple of days later. In my choir class, a couple of girls who liked to pick on me looked me over and one said, Nice outfit, who died? I can't lie, I got a bit of a thrill from replying, My mother, and watching her face turn red when another kid confirmed it. I forgive you, Vicky P. Beneath that, we have this reply from Cinnamon Soy. This reminds me of the time that my grandmother died. It was the middle of July, so it was really hot weather. So, I decided to wear a rather short black dress. I get in the elevator at the hotel that we're staying at on the morning of the funeral, and some random guy got in too. He looks at me and says, Isn't it a little too early for a little black dress? I replied, It would be, but I'm going to a funeral. He shut up real quick. And then another story from Slug Fairy. Oh man, when I was 16, my dad died right at the end of winter break. Mom held us back an extra day, since, you know, it's a traumatic event. I go in the day after and one of my friends was like, Oh man, you just wanted an extra long vacation, huh? I just looked at them and said, No, my dad died. 
it looked like they were hit by a ton of bricks. And then another story from Tony Danzer. My dad died early in the morning, and after sleeping all day, I decided to go to my dance classes that night to maintain some sense of normalcy. One of my cousins was in the first class with me, but not the second. After the first class, I got caught up talking to my cousin for a few minutes about plans to go shopping for something to wear to the funeral. The teacher of the second class, who wasn't listening to the conversation, got snippy with me for holding things up, so I hurried back to class. After class, she seemed to feel bad about it, so she asked if everything was okay with my cousin. I said, yeah, she's fine, but my dad died this morning. I've never seen someone's face drop so fast. Whoops. Our next reply is from Frost Nova Omega. I was in elementary school during recess, just kinda daydreaming and looking at some ravens flying overhead, when one of them suddenly took a nosedive right into an open trash can. So, of course, I rush over there to check it out, but the raven is just gone, vanished. I wasn't the only person to see it though, another kid came rushing over as well, and that's how I met my best friend for the next four years. OP, I feel like there's a slight possibility that your best friend is actually a shape-shifting raven. Our next Reddit post is from Moon Man. I was driving a friend home to Indianapolis from Holy Cross in South Bend. We got pulled over for speeding and the cop asked me, Son, do you know how fast you were going? To which I replied with a straight face and no sarcasm. Well, my cruise control was set at 88, so I'm guessing somewhere in the vicinity of 88. I've never seen such a confused look on a person's face. He proceeds to ask me if I can step out of my vehicle and into his so he can talk to me while he writes me a ticket. I comply, and as he's writing me up, he's explaining to me how he had to do his share of training in Indianapolis. He said the one thing that amazed him was how fast locals drive, especially on I-465, and he understands why I'm conditioned to do so. As soon as he's done with the ticket, he turns to me and says, So, here's the deal. You're the first motorist to ever admit to me that you knew that you were speeding, so I'm gonna cut you a break. If you can make it back to Indy without getting another ticket, I won't turn this one in, but if you do, you're getting two. I slow down for the rest of the drive. Man, stories like this piss me off because I have never, ever, ever in my life evaded a speeding ticket. I think I'm like seven for seven. It doesn't matter if I'm nice, quiet, friendly. Every single time the cop nails me with a speeding ticket. It sucks, man. I mean, I stopped speeding. I haven't gotten a speeding ticket in like 10 years because I've completely changed my driving habits because of this exact reason. But part of me wants to just start speeding again so I can like eventually, like sometime it's got to happen to me, right? You think. Statistically, it's got to happen at some point in my life. But no, not once, man. Never lucky. Our, ne <laughs> Our next reply is from Plied Pinscup. My doctor once asked me if I'd had a digital rectal exam yet. I responded, oh, they're all digital now. Then I looked over to see him lubing up his digits. Our next reply is from Separate Log. Well, not so unbelievable because we've been married five years now, but when I first met my wife, I was in Vancouver for a student program for the summer. She was a model and crazy beautiful. I was some dirty farm kid from Saskatchewan who couldn't flirt to save his life, had never kissed a girl or taken one on a date. So when I came back to my hometown, the way I told people about my girlfriend was, yeah, I have a girlfriend, but she's a model in Vancouver and no one here has ever met her yet. Maybe one day. It took more than two years for anyone to believe me. That was our slash ask reddit, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new reddit videos every single day.